So the casting director was present as well as and the other actor. And I was able to see all their faces and then we just pretty much read the scene. And it wasn't that bad. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, I haven't done any um like callbacks or anything like that yet mm-hmm. with other with with other actors. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. So um so what are you doing to stay busy during the quarantine? Are you relaxing? What are you doing? Yes, I'm watching Netflix. I'm Netflix and chilling. It's a vibe. Yes. <laughs> At first, I was all like, at first I was all like, oh, I'm gonna be writing a whole bunch of songs. The child, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. And you gotta know that. I was like, let me just relax and just be chill because I can't. I'm, uh, let me catch up on Netflix stuff. So I feel it. I feel it. So, hi, Alina. Thanks for joining us. So, a couple things um, before we actually get started. Okay. Of course, this is hosted on behalf of Faith, the Foundation for Artistic Talent Empowerment. Uh, we do have the Instagram. I pinned it there. I pinned my Instagram, Angelica underscore Mirian, as well as the next favors. His Instagram is there. Make sure you follow him. And then also the fake global. It's e underscore global. You can follow them as well for our all industry and entertainment updates. Um, this week during quarantine, we've just been doing a lot of different lives with artists, spotlighting artists, giving them an opportunity to share their experiences, hoping that these experiences can help you advance your artistic career as, as well. And so today we're going to be showcasing the next favors. Yes, I'm so excited. Yes, he is a singer, he is a songwriter, he's a producer, he also is an actor, and um, he's also on the board, he's one of the board members of Fake Global as well. So I, I am, I am, shout out, shout out. So LA. many wow, so many <laughs> How do you handle all of it? Um, how do I handle all of it? Um, I try to make sure I have a structure in place. Mm-hmm. I think that having a organized routine is important to me mm-hmm. so that's how I try to manage it all and I also like to um, I joke and say that I have ADD because I can do something and then I'll do something else and then I'll be like writing a song like oh I have homework to do let me do homework and then that's just like my brain so I feel like spacing that out honestly keeps it fresh yeah makes sense I love that I love that so could you tell us, um, I guess more people will join in, but they can always watch the replay after. We'll mm-hmm. go ahead and get started for those of us that are on time. Um, yeah, <laughs> this industry is extremely important to be on time, ain't that right? It is. Punctuality is is, is a key. <laughs> yes. Yes, so how about you tell everybody kind of how you got started in the entertainment industry? Like, where did this all start for you? I mean, for me, honestly, it started as a child. Like, I was that child. My mom used to always say that, like, I could sing before I could talk. Like, I would always be singing. Mm-hmm. I would be singing. Um, I used to sing like, in the church choir. And I was one of those kids, like, give me a solo. I want to, where's my mic? I want a <laughs> solo. Because, you know, some kids are like, no, I don't want to sing by myself. I'm like, oh, that's mine. Y'all can just sit there. Y'all can stand there. Let me have my mom. I was that child. Um, so, yeah, it started... It started back then, and then, you know, eventually as I got, I got older, I, you know, did more drama stuff. Mm-hmm. I did a lot of, like, musicals in high school. Mm-hmm. And then when I was 19, I moved to L.A. Okay. Um, and I moved to, you know, pursue songwriting and everything else. And then I had a friend who suggested I join L.A. casting. And I joined L.A. And I did acting, of course, in high school with theater. It wasn't any like TV stuff or any like commercials or film, but just theater stuff, um, mm-hmm. musicals. So I had that experience, but I was like, okay, I signed up for LA casting and <laughs> long story short, I booked my first like acting job two weeks after living in LA. Wow. I was like, okay, well, oh, I guess I was able to join the unions, uh, SAG. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it was a very, I was like, okay, this is something that I could do as well. Cause it's something that I loved. I just didn't know how to get into it. Mm. So I was like, okay, well, I guess, I guess we're here, you know? Mm-hmm. So it kind of sounds like it kind of just things aligned for you when you got there. It's not mm-hmm. that common that people book their first acting job after two weeks. Mm-hmm. What steps did you take? Did you just know the right people, the right relationships, or were you diligent in pursuing it? How did you get that opportunity like that? I mean, honestly, I just... I literally, you know, followed his instructions of signing up online. Mm-hmm. I had an audition. They were like, oh, can you improv? And I said yes, even though I couldn't. I didn't know what that meant. I was, I was, I was acting. It wasn't a lie. It was acting. I was creating a character. And so I, but 
you know, we just went with the flow. We just improvs. Um, and then I didn't actually, I actually didn't book the job that I auditioned for. Okay. Um, that role, it was another role that they ended up giving to me. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So, did you always like have ambition to be a singer slash songwriter, or did that kind of come about later in your life, or you just knew from a child? Yeah, I always wanted. Well, at first, I wanted to just be a singer because that's all I knew. Like as a kid, mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh, I want to be a singer," you know, because I can sing. <laughs> so let me just do. That's what I should do. And then, you know, as I got older, I didn't realize I was songwriting at that time. Mm -hmm. But I would listen to songs on the radio, mm -hmm. and I would just be like, "Uh, -uh I like the lyrics. I'm gonna rewrite the lyrics." <laughs> and I was just making my own lyrics, and I would just do all this other crazy stuff. And mm -hmm. then my my uncle, Uncle Butch, was like, "You should really like focus on songwriting because you know they make you wow. know money and they really publishing. Because sometimes the artists, if they're not smart, they can get screwed over. But publishing is forever. And so that's how actually kind of how. And I, when he first said, that, I was like, "No, I don't want to be no songwriter. Who knows a songwriter? Because right. I think at that point I was just focused on like the spotlight of it versus like mm -hmm. the art of it. Because I was a kid, so you know what." How would I know? But right. then I realized, like, that's one of the most important parts of a song is the actual songwriting aspect of it, is developing <laughs> that and pushing mm -hmm. your pen for that. So Right. So for those that are new to this and they're trying to get into songwriting and stuff like that, you talked a bit about publishing. Could you explain that to them for those that are interested in being a songwriter? Yes, of course. Yes. I mean, I think everyone... <laughs> Everyone, every songwriter, publisher knows that publishing is always like, because uh, people, the terminology is just like, it's so confusing. So I'm gonna try to go slow. <laughs> I'm, trying, okay. I'm trying to go slow because I like because sometimes people publishing say publishing one on one. Publishing one on one. So okay, so you have a song. Mm -hmm. Let's say I wrote the song by myself. Mm -hmm. I own two hundred percent of the song. Okay, as a BMI register a bmi is a pro there's pros are ask at bmi csap so as a bmi uh writer i own 200 percent of that song mm -hmm. all right 100 percent of that is the writer share mm -hmm. and un another 100 percent is the publishing share so when you write a song you have the sound recording which is what you hear mm -hmm. and then you have the um publishing which is the idea of the song mm -hmm. so i could write a song and I have the publishing, you can sing it, and then you have the recording. Mm -hmm. And those are two aspects of, you know, those are the two major aspects of music composition. Mm. Yes. Nice. Thanks for breaking that down for someone that's new to songwriting. I hope you wrote those notes down. Yeah. Um, so I know with the whole songwriting and singing, and I know you booked your first acting job like two mm -hmm. weeks after moving to L.A., mm -hmm. but what are some of the adversities that you had to overcome, you know, moving to L.A. by yourself? Did you face Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's so many. I mean, you can pick any of them, truly. There's yeah. so many to choose from. I mean, honestly, me moving to... Because no one thought I was going to move to L.A. And I was talking <laughs> to my brother about this, Chauncey, the other day about how... Because he helped me. He, he drove out here with me. But oh. no one thought I was going to move to L.A. This was like... my. I just finished my... So I went to college for a year. I went to the University of Akron. after high school. Because I wanted to move after high school. Mm. I wanted to move out of high school, but, you know, everybody was like, no, 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 no. So I was like, okay. So last minute, um, I went to University of Akron because I only applied to, like, so many schools. Okay. Um, I then, <laughs> when moving here, you just realize, like, how difficult it was. I, I didn't realize it as at that time because I was 19, so I didn't know. But yeah. just being on your own in a major city. And yeah. I'm from a super small town. Like, it's nowhere near... I mean, the suburbs of L.A. are bigger than my city, my hometown. So, like, having that experience of just moving out here, being on your own, not really knowing how to navigate, mm -hmm. because we are in this industry where, like, if you want to be a doctor, you just go to med medical school, right. your residency, and then, boom, you're a doctor. But if you want to be a artist, it's like you really don't know how to navigate that. You're taking everyone's advice, because everyone has advice. People who have never been artists, have advice about how to be an artist, which you should do. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. like, trying to navigate and try to make the right choices. Yeah. Especially when you're 19 years old was very challenging for me. But I, you know, I, I believe in God, and I'm very, um, I have like to pray and meditate and make sure that I nice. focus on what the move of God is for my life. Mm -hmm. Because you can have people offer you things. Like, I've had people offer me 
different situations. And I was just like, no, nah, that don't sound that don't sound like something I want to do. Wow. That don't sound like it. So you really have to. I think navigating is probably the biggest challenge, even now, honestly, even now, mm -hmm. trying to navigate. You know. And I love that you said that because even just talking about self worth within the industry, knowing what you are, what you are worth as well as who you are, your identity is extremely important in the industry. Because as you said, a lot of people came to you and offered you things that you felt didn't align with your purpose. But yeah, you would have to actually know yourself to know that that didn't align with how you perceived yourself or how you like to be perceived within the world. Yeah. I love that you said that. So we're going to be taking some questions from you guys as well. As you know, if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the question box below. And then they can show up on the screen so that when people come join us, they'll know exactly what we're talking about. Also, for those of you that are just joining, again, this is Lynette. She's a songwriter. She's a singer. He's a producer. He's also an actor. He is actually also on the board for Faith, Faith Global, the foundation of artistic empowerment, talent and empowerment. So then we see here. Okay, so we actually do have a question from our audience, and what they're asking is our friends, our kings and queens that have joined us. Someone wants to yeah. know. Actually, that's my mama. Someone. Oh, hey. My mama wants to know what kept you focused on not giving up on following your dreams. Oh, what kept me focused? Honestly, I think that I am like, hmm, what did keep me focused? <laughs> That's a good question, actually. I mean, because I think sometimes you cannot be focused, mm -hmm. and that happens more so than not. But I think that for me, <laughs> being the, <laughs> trying to be focused is me literally understanding, constantly being reminded of what I want mm. out of life. Because I think a lot of people want different things. A lot of people want to be married. A lot of people want kids. A lot of people want... To just, you know, have, you know, a nine to five, a stable life. And yeah. you know, that was never, you know, never my goals per se. Mm -hmm. So I think that always knowing that and just being true to myself. Because a lot of times people can try to, like, deter you. And be mm -hmm. like, oh, you, you should do this. You should focus on that. But I think that knowing your goals. And I have to constantly remind myself, of like, okay, this is what I want. And yeah. if, if something comes up that keeps me unfocused, I have to be like, okay, I'm not focused on what I want, because this is not what I want, this is a, this is just something temporary, and I think that for me, staying focused on what I want um, comes with just reminding myself, honestly. Absolutely, I love that you said that, we have to remind ourselves, and one way that I tend to remind myself, and that is, I do a lot of affirmation, I affirm, I say I am this, I am that, and that tends to help me, um, you know, continue to recognize who I am and what I'm called to do um, during the first experience. Another thing that I like to add, kind of, it kind of inspired, what you said inspired me, was also to answer that question, knowing your why. Why yeah. you this? You know, what motivates you? And often yeah. our life experiences cause us to have something that makes, that motivates us to get up every morning and try again. So for you, singing, songwriting, stuff like that, you have this creative niche. It's, it is a why. What do you think your why is that motivates you? What do you think is it is that keeps you going? Why? Oh, that's such a good question, my why. I honestly think it's just my destiny, honestly. Mm, wow. Like, I cannot imagine myself doing any other being in any other industry, having any other life, living in any other place. Mm -hmm. Like, honestly, I just, I, I don't, I think that when you really are in tapped, when you try to become um, in tapped with yourself, your true self, yeah. your inner self, I think you can see it more clearly. I think it, it is easy to not remember your why mm. and to how your why seems to change. But the older I get, I realize that my why is forever the same. Yeah. I'm like this is this is a part of my destiny. This is my life. You know. I love that. This is a part of my destiny. This is my life. We can get t-shirts yeah. made that says that. <laughs> so what? We can get some t-shirts made that says that. Yes. Yes. Merch. Yes. Merch. <laughs> yes. I love that. So again, if you guys have questions, put them down there in the question box. You don't have to put them in the comments. You can just put them in the question box and then they can pull up for everyone to see. Again, for songwriters, people that are interested in publishing and singers or whatever that, this is the perfect uh, opportunity for you to ask questions from a professional. 
but I actually have another question for you. Mm -hmm. um, what advice would you possibly give the younger version of yourself, a new singer, a new songwriter, just coming fresh into the industry? What advice myself would you give or someone else? To yourself, if you can go back. If I can go back, hmm. honestly, I would tell myself to push that pin more. Mm -hmm. Always push your pin. Like literally, I cannot emphasize that enough. I was just reading about um, Taylor Swift and how like she was blocking. She was able because you know this industry is crazy. Mm -hmm. So I was looking at someone who was such at a high level and how they were able to still she's still able to control her career because she writes her songs. Mm -hmm. So she's you know she's she went through that whole thing with her label her old label. So I think that for me it just it further emphasized the importance of writing writing mm -hmm. your own material writing i mean being a part of the writing room making sure you have publishing on your records because it really can um help you maintain control you know mm -hmm. which you know is important as an artist because a lot of people will try to take advantage of you absolutely now did you have like a mentor or someone that kind of walked you through all of this mm -hmm. or how did you find out how did you become so knowledgeable you know what honestly i because people i was listening to the live yesterday and she was talking about how she had a mentor and i i okay so i won't say i had a mentor like someone that i went to directly but i will say that i did have a a, a vast amount of mentors who like pushed me like nice. i know miss herma when i went to church she would always give me solo. She would always like tell me like, "Oh no, this is what sounds good for your voice. This is what you know how to pick and choose a song." And then I remember another person that I told me about what an EP was, mm -hmm. and she was all like, "Oh, I'm doing an EP." And this was like, I had to be like sixteen, seventeen. I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna do EP too." Because so I didn't even know what that was a thing or that. Can you tell that. them what that is? Because some people probably oh. have what's an EP. Yeah, an EP. Okay, so you have an LP, which is like a traditional album. So it has like, you know, 11 songs, 10 songs, 13, 15 sometimes. And the EP is an extended play. So it's basically just a shorter version. It's like, you know, four songs, four to eight songs if you want to really overdo it. Mm -hmm. And go ahead and drop a shameless plug because I could have saw a little birdie. I think I oh. dropped an EP. Oh, yeah, I did drop an EP, songwriter EP out right now. If you want to go check it out, go check it out. What's the name of it? So they can it's, find called, it. it's, it's called Songwriter. Nice. Love that. Yeah, Love that. Yeah. So you got a songwriter's EP out there. So again, that's a good note for those of you that are interested in being songwriters, creating mm -hmm. an EP and actually showcasing your talent. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to say you're a, you're, a show, uh, you're a songwriter and it's another thing to actually be one. You, yeah. you don't have to have all the resources. All you need is for creativity. So Truly, truly. Absolutely. Yeah. Did you have something to speak to that? Yeah, I agree. You really, you can really do it at a, you know, you don't really need a big studio per se. I did a lot of my EP in my closet. Like, wow, I really? I did. Yes, I did. I recorded. I I like half of it because I did actually go to a studio, but I did record a good majority of it, like in my closet. I have my mic. I just wow. set up and I just knew, like you know, I did it like on Logic. So I just you know recorded with my laptop and my mic, and you know I I. I made some of the beats myself, but then I also just, you know, um, hired some friends of mine that I know just to, like, help me with some of the productions of some of the songs and then just put it out. I put it out uh, independently because I do have my own, like, label situation. I ended up leaving. Wow. I ended up getting another deal. <laughs> but my songwriting EP is on. Um, I did it completely by myself. Wow, so you said you filmed, you recorded some of your EP in your closet. I heard your EP and it's phenomenal. I would have never you, imagined that. Like, like, I just knew it was up and asked to go trapping. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess you're in the closet trapping too. So. Child, closet too. You gotta, you gotta. And even now, since we're in quarantine, I'm really going to be like. Some of my friends, some of my uh, songwriter friends were joking because they're just like, okay, I guess we really gotta like be out here learning logic and stuff because you know logic, but you don't really, you know, as a songwriter. You don't really know logic, so now you have to really like, really try to you know, <laughs> do vocal editing and that's ghetto. But here we are, <laughs> we're here. And for the audience that doesn't, and the people that just joined us, they don't know what logic is. Could you just tell them what that is? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like a like a DAW. So you have different like you have Pro Tools. Um, it is basically where you can like create music. Mm -hmm. 
So you have Pro Tools, you have uh, Logic, you have another one. I, I think it's called Ableton or something like that. And then you mm -hmm. have um, a cheaper version is GarageBand, which is basically like, it's like Logic, but it doesn't have as many of the plugins and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's basically where you, uh, like a workstation, so you can like write music. If you produce, you can like make your beat in Logic, and then you can record. It's really good. It's great technology. Nice. So it's basically no excuses. You can't say, oh, I can't afford to go to the studio. I can't do this because you just made it known that you created an album in your closet. And it's yeah. a very good quality album. Thank you. ITunes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. iTunes, Apple Music, Spotify, TikTok. You make nice. a TikTok video if you want to. I'll do a TikTok video. Yeah. Yes. Do a, tic do a TikTok shout out. Yeah, do a TikTok <laughs> so then I would say you spoke to a bit about relationships. Why are relationships important in the industry, in the music industry or entertainment industry? Are they important for you? By developing relationships with mm -hmm. others? Yeah, I think it's very important because a lot of what's okay, a lot of people say that, you know, it's not who you know, it's who oh no, that's what I say. Because a lot of people say <laughs> What do they say? Because <laughs> people are like, oh, it's all about who you know. But I'm like, no, it's about who knows you. Because mm. I have definitely been in situations where, like, I, I did this one TV show on Comedy Central. And I remember I didn't even have to audition for it. Like, the the casting director, who I knew, you know, and it's not even like we got to be best friends. It's mm. just, like, people knowing that you can do a job. Yeah increases your ability to get hired, especially in short notice, 100%. especially, because, um, yeah, we would like to say, like, oh, you have to audition, yeah, you have to, like, do callbacks, and those are, that's definitely a part of the process, mm -hmm. but a lot of times, especially in Hollywood, a lot of things are so just, like, quick, 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 like, can you come to the studio today, can you, um, oh, we're shooting something tomorrow, it's for a TV show, can you do it, yes, and so then that's, uh, Having those relationships and having people that know, like, okay, they're talented, they're professional, they can get the job done, they're on time, they're right. efficient. Like, developing those relationships is so important because, so important. honestly, when you think of, like, Disney, you think of uh, Fox, and you think of all these big studios, those are really just people. Those are really mm -hmm. just people running mm -hmm. these um, studios. 100%. People like you and I and people like the people that have joined this live as well. Mm -hmm. um, that, they just have a different job job type. Yeah. So, I love that you said that. So, we actually have a couple questions from those that have joined us. Someone says, what advice do you have for young artists trying to create their own sound? Their own artistic Oh, that's a good question. That was a good question. That is a good question because having your own sound is very important. I think when you're trying to develop your own sound, I would suggest this is me. Either playing something that you don't listen to at all. So, like, let's say if you're a rapper, I would no longer listen to rap for, for mm -hmm. if I'm developing a sound. Like, obviously, if you're trying to know, like, the market, then yeah, listen to the radio. But mm -hmm. if I'm a rapper, I'm like, okay, not listening to rap. Let me listen to opera. You mm -hmm. know, let me see how, what inspiration I can get from opera. What inspiration I can get from classical music. What mm -hmm. uh, inspiration I can get from listen to, listening to, like, Spanish music, like I don't know what these people saying. Indian music, I don't know what these people saying, but it's like me listening for ah! little bits of sound and letting, because I again I'm very like spiritual, so I believe that letting my spirit man like captivate the sound that is my sound, mm -hmm. you know, within the earth. So yeah, I would suggest that honestly. Mhm. Mm I love that you said that. Absolutely, I'll even speak to acting. You know, um, when I was growing up as a child, I actually used to just turn on. Um, the Spanish channels and just watch them and have yeah. them so proper and have no clue as to what they were saying. But yeah. I was more so paying attention to the technical aspect of if I can describe what I thought was going on in the scene. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the same thing, like, even when you play back your auditions, you know what your voice is once you're comfortable with it. Right. But paying attention to can someone really read what you're doing without actually hearing what you're saying, whether it's yeah. your body language, through what you're saying, through your eyes, through expression. So I love that the same thing, you translate that to music, you know. Mm -hmm. Finding that way, you know, like you said, expanding outside of your comfort zone, finding other um, opportunities to listen to things that you probably wouldn't have been exposed to, and that helps mm -hmm. you create your artistic voice. Yeah, and I think that's very important to find. Finding your own voice is probably, it's what makes you stand out, 
you know, from that's what makes you different from the other hundreds of thousands of people that, like you said, are auditioning for a job or trying to put out music is finding your own voice. So, you know. mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And I think that finding your voice comes with finding yourself. Oh, as you yes. Spend more time with yourself, yes. as you connect more with the essence of who you are, I think your voice mm. begins to flow outward, you know, from internal to outward toward the universe and toward those that are around you. Yeah, yeah, I always say that, like, you can fool everyone else, but you cannot fool yourself. Like, you know the truth, even though we try to, um, cap and lie, like, we don't know what's going on, but, like, oh, okay, even though we try to do that, <laughs> like, we know <laughs> our authentic selves. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, we know our authentic selves. <laughs> Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So then um, we actually have another question from the audience. Sorry, guys, I had a couple technical difficulties there, but I'm still here for you. <laughs> You're fine. I was confused as well. <laughs> <laughs> Should new artists invest in their own recording equipment? Oh, yes. <laughs> Yes, of course, you should. I mean, don't go overboard. Like, because if you don't know how to use expensive equipment, don't get expensive equipment. Like, honestly, you could just get, like, I have, like, I have a studio mic. I'm, like, looking at my studio setup now. I have a studio mic, and then I have, like, an audio converter, and then I have the speakers. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy to use for me. Um, but if you, you know, depending on, you could always just get a USB mic, plug it into your computer. You can get garage, but Logic's probably like two hundred dollars. So I mean, if you want to make that investment, make that investment. Buy a book for Logic. Logic is very intense. Mm -hmm. um, I took. I ended up taking like a, a class <laughs> in Logic just to learn how to like navigate lo Logic more. And even then, I was like, okay, this is <laughs> this is not my strong suit. But mm -hmm. learning how to do the ba the basic necessities, you know, it's very important. So having recording equipment, yeah, I would suggest that for sure. Absolutely. I love that. So then I guess I guess you kind of spoke to it a bit, but if you can leave, I guess, three tips that you leave with a new singer-songwriter, what are three things that they should be working on, not necessarily during this quarantine, but just in general mm -hmm. to advance their artistic careers? Oh, okay. For a singer-songwriter, um, I would definitely say, again, I said this before, I'm, this is probably going to be the highlight of my top advice is push your pen. Push your songwriting, make sure you can write, make sure you can write lyrics, make sure your lyrics are good, make sure that you're able to um, create ideas that are relatable but yet unique, if that makes mm -hmm. any sense. Um, make great melodies. That's probably my first one, push your pen. My second is to know the business. Um, mm. Like I said earlier, I own my own like label, so I think that for me, being you know, an artist, me having ownership, because um, right now I have a, distribu a distribution deal, but mm -hmm. me having that in place, just like let me know, like, okay, this is what I don't necessarily want to give away all my rights, especially now with the corona and everything literally being canceled. Mm -hmm. It makes you realize, like, the importance of, like, like, touring money is not going to be enough money you know mm -hmm. like because we can't tour and mm -hmm. here in california <laughs> you, can't tour, honey. <laughs> you can't tour no more girl uh and here in california they're, they're like saying that they're not gonna let us do any live events till 2021 so like this whole year you're not going to be able to perform no more so I think that for me ownership and owning your 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 copyright owning your masters owning your publishing owning all that stuff is you know, important. If you don't want to own it, at least know why you don't want to own it. At least know what deals you're getting into. Because I know so many people who are like, oh, I got a bad friend who got a bad deals. So I'm like, why did you sign this terrible contract? So I would say there's a book, I forgot what it's called, but it's called um, Understanding the Music Business. I would yeah. suggest that book. Just so you know. And honestly, if you sign any deal, get a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. Get a lawyer. Don't take my advice. If you want to, you know, get a deal, get a deal. If you want a distribution deal, know the difference between a record deal and a, a distribution deal. Um, but yeah, ownership is definitely a key, I would say. And what is that third one? I don't, hmm, what, is, what is my... I would say, honestly, something that I'm learning is rest. <laughs> it's rest. And I know we... Because I am, you know, a busy body... I, like to, I always have to be working. I always have to be doing something. But I'm realizing the importance of just, like, 
rest and taking a moment just mm-hmm. to see what's happening and the atmosphere, just to calm down, just to be like, okay, what is my next move? What is my next, you know, objective, my next goals? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I definitely think rest. And I know rest is so underrated. Rest is so underplayed because everybody's a hustler and grinding. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, rest. Mm-hmm. I love those tips that you gave a new singer, songwriter, or artist. I think mm-hmm. that that can be translated and applied to any anyone's careers that is an artist. Let's see. Do we have any other questions in the question box? Again, if you guys have questions, try not to put them in the comments. Try to put them in the question box so that everybody can see the questions when you're joining us here together. Um, yeah, I'm trying to read the comments. Mm-hmm. So you spoke a bit about the distribution deal, deal that you have going. How did you go about getting that? Oh, okay. So they actually reached out to me after oh. I did my, um, it's like, uh, I did my songwriting EP. I did that on TuneCore. So you just, I just paid them a fee or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they just give you your money. But then someone reached out and it's a, um, it's a public, it's a public, like, I think anyone can join, but you can um, also, like, work with their team as well. Um, and, they, you know, they try to get you sync placements. They try to get you on playlists and stuff. And, yeah, so I, I that's how that happened. Um, mm-hmm. I think that for me, in past deals that I was offered, I knew, like, okay, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that. So, for me, I think ownership has always been important for me, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, my master's. So I think that's probably, that's why I felt like all this, and just hearing, because I did research on the person in the company, and just hearing, you know, them talk about how they, you know, they feel like that is important for their company to make sure that their artists are empowered, to make sure that their artists um, maintain ownership of their copyright. I was like, okay, this is definitely the perfect partner for me right now. Absolutely. I love that. So what inspired your most recent EP, the one that you dropped on all those platforms? Yeah, songwriter EP. What inspired that, huh? I mean, so many different situations, honestly. You know, I <laughs> was out of a relationship, and so, I, you know, I wrote about that a little bit. I wrote about, um, yeah, just life, honestly. I think... <laughs> Just life, it, honestly, because I think that as an artist, I, I, I'm able to pull inspiration from a, a vast majority of places. Mm-hmm. And I think that when writing Songwriter EP, I just wanted to be honest. I wanted to tell my story, you know, my thoughts, things that I think. And I, you know, if people relate to it, then that's great. If people don't, then, you know, it's cool too. But. Mm-hmm. Nice. I love that. And so, what if for a new writer, a new singer, I mean, I know everyone's process is different, but what does your creative process usually look like when you're writing a song or... Oh, yeah. I mean, my process is even different as well. I mean, it depends. Like, sometimes I'll be in the car and I'll just, like, think of a melody and I'll, like, voice my word and then I'll come back to it. Sometimes people, a lot of producers will send me tracks, you know, just so so that like I can like write on a song or whatever. Mm-hmm. So um, people send me tracks, and I'm like, okay, if I'm building a track, I'll think about it. I always write to title, so mm-hmm. I just have a whole bunch of like titles in my mm-hmm. like my vo- like my vocal. What's it called? Like notes, mm-hmm. like your notes, just your actual notes. Mm-hmm. And so like, okay, I'll like listen to a track, and mm-hmm. then if, you know, like the track. If I come up with a melody, then I'll write like that. Sometimes I play piano. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'll just be like at the piano playing chords and just like humming along. Nice. Sometimes I hear a song and I'll be like, uh, uh-uh, uh, I want to get, I want to write a response to it. So I'll like write a response to it. Yeah, I just there's different, definitely different approaches you can take. Absolutely. Nice. Let's see if we have any questions in the question box again. Try not to write them in the comments. Try to write them in the question box so that they can pop up for everyone to see. Nice. I hope you guys are learning a lot of information about songwriting, singing, all of that, again, from an expert. Now, are you currently working on a project, or are you still uh, promoting the EP that you just dropped? Yeah, I'm uh, currently still promoting that. Mm -hmm. That was recent. That was, that was what, March? (laughs) No, that was... 
When was it? It was February. I think it was only like it was like right before Corona hit. It was. I oh, see now all my days are because I feel like because the quarantine got me like what? When are we in June? Or are we in April? Yeah, I think it was in like <laughs> early March. I think it was early March or end of end of February. So I just I just released it. I know. Um, so yeah, we're still currently promoting that. I just signed my distribution deal with us uh, with my distributor. So we're now working on like doing placements and stuff like that mm-hmm. um, for that. And then yeah, but I'm, I am working on a new project. So I don't know, like I don't know. I already have the songs done, but I think I'm just like you know how you're just like, oh, do I really want to release another project right now? <laughs> like, nice. I'm I'm just, like as an artist, you're just like uh, I think that you always have like. Okay, what should I do? Should I just release, you know, an EP, or should I just do like singles? Like, who knows? But yeah, I am currently writing, finished writing, but you know, mm-hmm. I'm always writing for new stuff. Love it, love it, love it. And so, um, I know you guys. You mentioned in LA right now. They're saying that it's gonna be no touring. It's gonna be none of this and that and that. How are you handling the whole this whole quarantine Corona situation being there in LA? And what's going on there with you guys? Um. Well, we're currently on lockdown. We already knew we we're gonna be on lockdown until like the fifteenth of May. So I know oh. a lot of states are a lot of states are opening back up, but not California. Yeah, in Atlanta, we're supposed to open back up tomorrow. And I, I'm still, I will still be in the house. But shout out to them, shout out to, shout out to Atlanta, no, but I'm still gonna be in the house. Um, but I think that for me, since I just finished a project, I was already gonna plan to rest anyway. So like, it just, it just so happened now everyone else is resting. Because right now I would, this was like you know pilot season. I'll be like auditioning way more. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not. I mean, I'm auditioning, but it's like <laughs> weird because like you audition and then it's just like okay, well, mm-hmm. we'll see. You know, it's like and there's no like date of like when when you work. We like you know. So mm-hmm. I think that the, since the Corona hit, being in California, it's weird because it's like nice outside, but you can't really you know all the things are closed. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, just really just being like at home, being with yourself. Which, you know, is great. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. How, how are you quarantining? I'm actually doing pretty well, because if I'm honest, I'm always quarantined. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, yes, Grandma. I'm, I'm super extroverted, but I'm also kind of 50-50 introvert as well. So mm-hmm. I yeah. like to stay home and read my books. I like to go ride my bike, spend time in nature, you know. Yeah. And I also had a lot of different things that I had hopes to accomplish this year. Yeah. So I've just been utilizing this time to just sit put and actually not be a procrastinator. Like literally well, just yeah. do the work. So, you know, it's, it's actually hasn't been bad. It's, it, it forced me to be disciplined in a way. Um, but, of course, you know, you know, I feel for everyone that's being affected by this. And I'm yeah. just hoping that, you know, this will pass and we'll come out of this much stronger than we, we went into it. Like everything else in life, of course. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, but, yeah, so, again, guys, if you don't have any more questions in the question box... You know we're doing these lives every day this week. Um, we have two lives tomorrow. We're actually doubling up. We have Ooh, two. yes. I know. It's going to be a long day. Two lives tomorrow. <laughs> one with a well-known actor and another one with another singer and songwriter. And I'll post flyers for those on the fake global page as well. Make sure you're following that page. It is fresh and new. Um, it's f.a.t.e underscore global. We are global. And it stands for the foundation um, for artistic talent and empowerment. We do provide um, artistic services, mentorship services, as well as financial services for up and coming and younger artists. Uh, so, Manette, we have to say thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Uh, this was so much fun. Absolutely. You dropped so many gems. I mean, you talked about how you got started in the entertainment industry, you know, how you became a singer, songwriter, producer, actor, booked your first job within two weeks of moving to L.A., which is so not normal. You know, (laughs) you talked about the adversities that you overcame as well as 
you know, some advice that you give to a new songwriter, some tips, and just what you tell your younger self. So yeah. we have to say thank you. Thank you yeah, so much. Of course. Thank you so for having me. And I just want to say I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy <laughs> for you. Thank you. You, you and Fake Global, I'm just like, oh, my goodness, it's coming. <laughs> and I remember, you know, you're just the brainstorm, the seed of it. So the seed, yes, yes. you're you building this. Yeah, seeing you build this is so inspiring. So yeah, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, and I just we just want to say, you know, on behalf of Faith, you are on behalf of Faith because you're a board member. But to want to the many hats that you wear, but <laughs> we just want to say that you're a king, and we salute you, and you wear your crown extremely well. And thank you so much for thank you. And sharing this information with other aspiring singers and songwriters. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Well, y'all don't got no more questions, so we're going to go in and dip out. We're going to head out. And thank you guys for joining us. Bye. Thank you, guys. <laughs>